missionary that does not know who they are sitting over there. Just 12 more that would give. May God bless you. But now it's time for the preaching of the word of God. Hallelujah. I said it's time for the preaching of the word of God. Thank you for so much for being here tonight. Thank you for coming out in the rain. What a beautiful congregation. I believe God's going to do miraculous things here in this service. Tonight, Brother Steve Willoughby, a missionary of 18 years. He spent two years in Malaysia, 16 years in Singapore. Pastors a church there. Hallelujah, a church of several hundred people. And I want you to know that in that church with no missionary money, they pay a monthly rent of $28,000 a month for the place where they're holding church. Baptizing people in the name of Jesus. Going to India, Bangladesh, China, preaching the gospel out of that church there. Hallelujah. He's coming to preach the word tonight. How many of you will help him preach? I can't hear you. How many of you will help him preach tonight? Brother Willoughby, come. In the name of the Lord Jesus. To him who sits upon the throne be all honor and glory and majesty and power. Hallelujah. Lift your voices, children of God. Hallelujah. He is exalted in this house. Be exalted in this house, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are most worthy. You're the lily of the valley. You're the bright and morning star. You're the rose of Sharon. We give honor and glory unto you. Clap your hands, all ye people. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. For he has triumphed over the horse and the rider. He has thrown into the sea. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe in the power of one service. It was a service like this. And then at 18 years old that God called me into the ministry. It was a service like this that I made a commitment to missions for life. I believe in the life-changing impact of one single solitary service. If you believe that God is a life changer and that he is here, right here, right now, to lead us into his presence in a dimension of his grace, would you give him glory? Jesus led this service make a difference in eternity. Let there be young people that are called into missions tonight. Let them receive, hallelujah, their divine ordination. I'd like to honor some men in my life if I can take just a moment. I'm a Christian because of Bill World. I'm a teacher of doctrine because of S.G. Norris. I'm a preacher because of Daryl Dowdy. I'm a missionary because of George Shong. I'm an evangelist because of Billy Cole. I'm an apostolic because of Lee Stone King. But I'm a lover of Jesus because he first loved me. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you I love you and I'm feeling rather fearless because a huge group of ABI friends in front of God and everybody in a restaurant last night prayed for me thank you I give honor to brother Haney and the executive board and the general board to brother Hal and the executive and the foreign missions board Romans chapter 1 and verse 14. Romans chapter 1 and verse 14. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians. Both to the wise and to the unwise. Now, there's no greater translation than the King James Version, but I'd like to read that verse.
from the NLT for its impact. For I have a great sense of obligation to people in our culture and to people in other cultures, to the educated and uneducated alike. I want to preach for a few moments the culture of Christ. The culture of Christ. Would you ask God's power and anointing Jesus right now upon your servant? Hallelujah. Give me, hallelujah, the words to speak. Let the audience have ears to hear. Let your power reign upon us as the choir has spoken. Let your presence flow like a river for power and purpose and destiny. And we would give you the praise. Would you give God one more great, mighty hand clap for all that he has done in this house tonight. For the missionaries sent on their way. For the crusades that represent thousands being born again of water and of spirit. Can I hear your voice? Can I hear a shout of praise? You may be seated. There is a huge difference in cultures. I live in the part of the world in our church in Singapore. We have Chinese and Indian cultures that are vastly different. The American culture and the European culture are literally oceans apart. Who would compare British and French cuisine? Don't want to start anything, Brother Navaki, but you... You help me out, okay? Indonesians, you know, we say that all the Orientals look alike. I got news for you. They say all of us look alike. Mm. I ain't quite figured it out, but that's what they say. But Indonesians and Vietnamese, definitely not the same. And that's only national culture. There's the cultural difference between the rich and the poor. The cultural divide between the educated and uneducated. There's even the y'all and the you guys. But there is a culture that conquers every other culture. And it is the culture of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a dominating. It is a overwhelming. It is a revolutionary culture that changes the entire world. Do you believe in the culture of Christ? The culture of Christ covers and unites every culture. The true living culture of Christ can and will flourish in any country, any environment, any economic circumstance, any language, any demographic. Don't give me the story of burn over fields. Don't give me the story of devils too big and problems too great. Honey, I am here to tell you tonight that the culture of the Lord Jesus Christ has proven in the book of Acts is superior, is greater than any culture on the planet Earth. There is nothing human. There is nothing inhuman that is greater than the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you clap your hands if you believe it? Uh, But what is? What is the culture of Christ? This isn't meant to be comprehensive. Just going to mention two or three different things. But the culture of Christ is a culture of prayer. Jesus' ministry was a series of prayer PowerPoints. And in between these prayer PowerPoints flowed miracles and salvation. 
It is the height of arrogance for a man to call himself a preacher and not pray. Not talk about praying, actually pray. Because my prayerlessness says to Jesus, I don't need your friendship, your wisdom, or your resources. Is it okay if I just tell you about some prayer? I, I'm going to preach to me. I'm going to tell you what God's been tell, telling me. He said, Steve, well, let me, there's two things that I want you to do in prayer. Number one, he says, I want you to change the direction of your prayer. And number two, I want you to change the dimension of your prayer. Can I talk about direction first? It would simply be summed up something like this for us preachers and ministers of the gospel. Don't seek the message. Seek the messenger. Can I tell you how I come to this conclusion? I have observed religion in Asia. When they go to the temple, it has nothing to do with love and relationship with their God. The main motive is the gods are angry. And I have to appease them with gifts and prayer. And I, I have to be careful because they're, they're vengeful. And, and so, and I bring my gifts and my offering to the temple. Because if I make the gods happy, they will keep the bad spirits off my back. And if I keep the evil spirits off my back, I will have good luck. And if I have good luck, I'll make a lot of money. And if I make a lot of money, I will be happy. It's not God. It's not love of God. It's about me, 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 me. I was contemplating those horrible, wicked people one day. And Jesus said to me, Willoughby, you're a lot like those people. I got rid of the fish. We're getting ready to rumble, God. And I, I, I'm, on, I'm on explosion mode. And God says, before you say one word, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you prayed five minutes about something that doesn't affect or is tied to your ministry career? I don't like when God asks those kind of questions. But he seemed insistent, so I reviewed my recent prayer topics, preaching at Thailand General Conference, need help. Preaching in India on a mission trip, need God. Preaching Good Friday service in Jakarta, Indonesia, God got to have a hot message. Regional Leadership Conference in St. Petersburg, Russia, God, we need revival in Russia. And Jesus said, when are you going to pray just to spend time with me. No motive, no reason, except just to spend time with me. Not asking me to bless your... Now, I'm using the word career, and I know we're, we don't like that word, but that's what God was using on me. Not asking me to help you preach, God said. Not asking for a move of God. All of that's great, but just... Because you are in love with me. Could you give me some special time? Could you do something that is not attached to your giving and your going and your preaching and your ministry? Could you just direct some affection toward me? Could we do that right now? Could you do that right now? Could you make him happy with your affection? <laughs> Jesus, not because I need anything, not because I want anything. I just love you. I just love you. You're so good to me. You're so great to me. You're so wondrous to me. I adore you. I exalt you. I praise you, Jesus. Come on, church. We got to spend more time loving him. We got to spend. This is what the Holy Ghost is saying. This is what the Jesus is asking for. A lot of other stuff will be automatically taken care of if we just love him. Love him. Come on for a moment. We don't have nothing better to do. 
There's nowhere better to go than right here, right now. This is it. He said, number two, Willoughby, I'd like for you to change the dimension of your prayer. I want you to pray big prayers. Pastor asked me, do you have any advice for the church in North America? I said, well, maybe it would be good advice for you what God said to me. Pray big prayers. Pray for nations. Pray for governments. Pray for national and worldwide issues. Pray for Israel and Jerusalem. The first Tuesday of every month, Tabernacle of Joy is standing and praying for the nations. We have prayer for the nations. We take prayer requests from all of the world because we're stupid enough to believe that God can, can, can a prayer from Singapore can catapult to the other side of the world. We believe that when we ask God to bring a bad politician out and put a bad, a good politician in, that God delights in those kind of prayers. That God gets happy when we get involved in praying big prayers. Hallelujah. Man, he's hot tonight. God's going to loose intimidation out of this house. Joel said it's going to come to pass in the last day, saith God, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. T.W. Barnes left us four months ago, but the, the mantle of the prophet is in this house. You're going to leave loose from your intimidation and pray big prayers. Last year, the Lord uh, told me to go to Toronto, Canada, and preach a crusade. We called it prophetic thunder because we felt that God wanted us to speak into the atmosphere and that God was going to do something great. The Lord said, I'm going, to, I'm going to impact 50 lives. That might not seem to be a lot to you. We had a lot more than that attend the crusade. But if 50 people got changed in that meeting, God only knows the residual effect. I took a young man who's launching his ministry to help me out, T.F. Tenney. We went to Toronto and said, we come in the name of the Lord, which is Jesus Christ. Saturday evening, Brother McKenzie was there. Brother Navaki, I think you were there. We prophesied that through the prayers of the righteous. And I want to take a moment and salute the Canadian brothers and sisters in this house who have been praying for my home country of Canada for revival. We prophesied that through the prayer of the righteous, God was going to turn the tide of that nation and change the government. Brother Haney, four months later, the liberal government of Canada was overthrown. And I'm glad to report to you tonight that a Christian conservative is the prime minister of Canada, and he is gaining more seats in the parliament. And somebody in Columbus, Ohio, ought to prophesy right now. I dare you to open your mouth and prophesy. Stop being intimidated about somebody who's going to hear you prophesy. Say it's a great day. Hallelujah. Come on, church. God is waiting for you to execute his judgment in the earth. God is waiting for you, his sons and daughters, to stand forth and say, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Be done here, 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 and here. Why? I said so. Because I am a child of the king. I am in covenant promises with the creator of heaven and earth. And God has given me authority. You better get belligerent. You better get violent. The Bible says the violent Take it by four. Get out of here, devil. Back off. Back out. Get away. Take your hands off my family. Take your hands off my children. Turn it loose of my church. Let go of the circumstances of my finances. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, do it. Do it. Speak to the spirit world. It's not big-mindedness that's killing us. It's small-mindedness. Brother Barnes said, in the last days, God is again going to have men 
that shut up the heavens and control the rain. Some of y'all think that borders on ridiculous. He said that men will once again announce plagues on those that refuse to acknowledge the lordship of Jesus Christ and lead a nation out of spiritual bondage. How many believes we could pray a big prayer right now? You want to pray a big prayer right now? I got a Holy Ghost idea I think God dropped into my mind. There is an ancient dragon serpent spirit that lies across China. Chinese Christians will tell you that the head of the dragon is in Tibet. Brother Howe, just a few days ago, you preached bot in Singapore. And you said, we've, the United Pentecostals, the apostolic one God, Jesus name, don't back down, don't back off, don't apologize for it. One God, tongue talking, holiness, Holy Ghost filled people. You said, we've got bread, not a short supply. God's not running out of resources, folks. God is not on the short handle of all this. We've got bread. Brother Howe was literally throwing loaves of bread. We have a, we have a, 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 a like this, bleachers. He's throwing it. There was a prayer warrior. There was an apostolic warrior that caught a piece of bread took that piece of bread and boxed it up. It is this person's intention that, sh that they are going on October the 8th. A piece of that bread, Brother Hal, is going to Lhasa, Tibet, the very head of the dragon. There is a temple that is in Lhasa, that is the highest elevation of a place of worship in the world. It is no mistake that the Bible talks about going up to the high places to tear the devil's kingdom down. If you'd like to take a moment to pray a big prayer, would you get to your feet and let me give you just a word of instruction. This is what I'd like for you to say, something along this line. Jesus, I'm asking us that when this takes place, on October the 8th, it's going to happen, that when this takes place, that Jesus Christ, the Lord of hosts, will spring, I want you to use this word, an ambushment. The Old Testament is full of God. God springing an ambushment. I'm tired of terrorists springing all the ambushments. Why can't the Jesus name, one God apostolics, spring an ambushment on the, ah, on the head of the serpent in China? And then asked that a five apostolic, fivefold, one God, Jesus name, bread of life ministry will flow to the entirety of China. Shall we pray? God, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command a divine ambushment that when that bread is placed in Lhasa, Tibet, on October the 8th, God, send a battalion of your angelic host spring upon that power, that principality of darkness, an apostolic ambushment unlike anything that China has ever known. God led an apostolic fivefold, one God, Jesus' name, bread of life ministry, flow to the entirety of China. If you believe God hears that kind of praying, put a little dance to it. Put a little shout to it. Put a little praise. How ye devils, for your time is at hand. For the righteousness of God has risen in the earth. And we proclaim his glory.
Yes, 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 yes. Fear and tremble, you demons of darkness. For the children of light have risen in the earth to proclaim there is one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. There is one Savior. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. Let it echo through the corridors of darkness in Tibet, shaking the foundations throughout Asia and China, the Pacific, Europe, Africa, Central America, South America. One more hand clap. Huh. You feel that? You feel that? Heaven gets happy when you pray big prayers. Hell's backing off, backing down, because we're marching. We're marching. Hallelujah. We're coming to the front line. We're soldiers of the cross, Brother Haney. We're soldiers of the cross. We're not chickens. We're not going back. We're going forward. The culture of Christ, you may be seated, is a soul winning culture. God made this so that you are not content if you don't pass it on. Without soul winning, you end up with a bunch of cannibalizing Christians that spiral down into self-centered carnality. I'm not some, I, 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 I pastor over a thousand people. I'm in the battle every day as a missionary, as a pastor. I know what I'm talking about. I think that the cure is to take ministry to the nations. America, I've become more aware of it this time, tonight on the way to church. Because of the inclement weather, we grabbed a cab and was sitting in the cab and I heard the accent of the cab driver and I said, sir, are you Ethiopian? He turned around and said, yes. How did you know? I said, because I love Ethiopia. Brother Zian Sia, a Chinese in the car with us, said, sir, can I ask you a question? He said, how much do you make an hour? He said, sometimes I make nothing. He said, but if, what would be a good wage? He said, you know, $10, I'm happy. Zian said, if you will not work tomorrow night for two hours... If you will come to the arena, to the Holy Ghost crusade, I'll pay your wages for two hours. I'll give you $20 not to work, but it'll be the greatest blessing of your life. We've got to take the message to the nations, to every culture, every tribe, every kindred, every tongue. Okay, now hang with me just a moment. Even this diversity is even in our small and mid, the mid and small sized towns. I want to make a statement. God is not running out of grace, but he is running out of time. So God in his infinite wisdom has, in order to save time, money, and resources, brought the nations to our doorstep and laid them in our lap. Is it okay if I preach a little home missions a moment? We are in the great U.S. of A., aren't we? This is the greatest mission sending nation on planet earth, isn't it? Yeah. 
We've got to wake up and smell the working of the Holy Ghost. My advice is every church, every saint, every soul winner must get involved in multicultural outreach. I haven't changed sides, Brother Howe. There's no side, There's says no the man. Because this is what I know. I know that if we reach them here, God will get a hold of their heart and send them back to the nation of their birth. And they'll be the greatest missionaries on planet earth. But we've got to get concerned about reaching those that don't look like, act like, smell like, talk like, think like we do. We've got to understand what God is doing through the power of the Holy Ghost. You might not can be a missionary to Africa, but there's somebody in your neighborhood, a Nigerian. Syrian and Angolan that you can reach for the kingdom of God. One of our apostolic contacts that we've been working with for more than five years in, in China, they recently started an English school. And uh, Jay came through the school on his way to Singapore to study. God's not only opening up America to the cultures of the world, but Singapore has suddenly decided to be an educational hub. And now we have nationalities flooding into our little tiny island from all over the world. And Jay was a six foot seven inner Mongolian Chinese. And before he left where he was studying, they hooked him up with a contact in Tabernacle of Joy, and he came to temporarily live in the house of one of our TJ saints as when he came to Singapore. I'd like for Brother Chad Flowers to tell you the rest of the story. Jay and I began a Bible study. I love teaching Buddhists a Bible study. You don't have to mess with different interpretations of Scripture, different doctrines in the Bible. All you have to do with the Buddhist is convince them that the God of the Bible loves them enough that they want to live, that he wants to live inside of him. I'll never forget when Jay finally got it because he asked me, Chad, are you telling me that the God of this Bible, he wrote this book through men? I said, yeah. He said, are you telling me that the God of this Bible wants to live inside of me? I said, yeah. He goes, wow. Kindergarten stuff to us. I would tell Jay every Sunday, Jay, before I leave, I'm going to see you get the Holy Ghost. I'm going to see you get baptized in Jesus' name. I'd go home and I'd sweat and I'd pray, God, don't let my sayings be in vain. Every time he'd come after church, Jay, you're this close. Two weeks before I left, they tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around and that six foot seven Chinese standing head and shoulders above every other one of them was raising his hands, crying tears, not speaking Chinese. Chinese Mandarin, not speaking English, but only a language that God understands, but that you and me know of. Two weeks, the week that I left, we baptized him in Jesus' name. Now, Brother Howe, I took that experience on that mission field. I took it to my mission field in Dallas, Texas. There is an Indian Hindu named Sujay Kukay. He is from a very high caste in India. And he lives on the first floor of our apartment. He's my racquetball buddy. We were going to play racquetball. And one of the gods that he worships was on his car. I asked him about it. He said, Chad, you Christians have it so easy. You only have to worry about one God. We Hindus have to worry about lots of gods. He doesn't even know them all. In his house, this is not in India. This is in the United States. In his house, he has a temple with seven gods that he prays to, continually burning incense. But he wanted to ask me about this movie, Passion of the Christ. I'll take any open door I can get. 
After explaining to him about that movie, pointing out in the Bible where that was moving through the Gospels, he came to church last Wednesday night. He heard somebody receiving the Holy Ghost in the prayer room. He wanted to come and see it. Then he came into church. By the end of the church service, he had his hands raised, didn't understand what he was feeling. Tears streaming down in his eyes. He told my wife, I think I could get to like this feeling. We're going to reach our world because we're going to reach them with the culture of Christ. Yes! Somebody say, Amen! Don't tell me it can't be done. All we need is just some of that old-fashioned passion. Hallelujah. That we heard preached about last night from Brother Dylan. you got to believe it. you got to walk it, talk it, act it, speak it everywhere you go. You say, Brother Willoughby, I'm not a talented person. Let me tell you, the main component of evangelism is not talent. It's compassion and commitment. I know a lady who has minimal formal education, no Bible school education, had never been to China, passed her physical prime, did not speak one word of Mandarin, but knew how to live the culture of Christ. The result is... In the last eight years, she's learned the language, baptized and prayed through to the Holy Ghost. More than 3,000 souls, her individual self. That is the rate of one per day for a consistent eight years. When our brother stood up here last night and he was signing his passion and his conviction, I want you to know I admire, I want to be that kind of person. I want to have that kind of commitment, that kind of passion to the culture of Christ. I want to be a soul winner. I don't want to be. I must be. I've got to be. There are no other options. Because I tell you, that kind of commitment is contagious. We now have a Singaporean family living in China that has had more than 500 receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And in both instances, more than half of these are ministers. That in some cases are leaders of hundreds and even tens of thousands. Hear me. Tens of of thousands in mainland China are being born again of water and of spirit because of one, one, it can be traced back to one soul winner. It can be traced back to one passionate, compassionate, committed soul winner. Ask God to help us. Ask God to help us be soul winners. There's a scripture, and it uses manifold, Ephesians 3 and 10 and 11. If I read in another translation, it says, God's purpose was to show his wisdom in all its rich variety to all the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. God wants to show out and show off for somebody. He's got something that he's delights in and something that he's can I say proud of they will see this when the Jews and the Gentiles are joined together in this church could it be that this scripture is a reference to God's eternal plan to make his church a multicolored multi-ethnic house Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Middle Mesopotamia, Portus, Cappadocia, parts of Libya, about Cyrene, strangers of Rome. 
Cretes and Arabians was there on the day of Pentecost. Cultures from all over the world. May I propose that when God wants to intimidate evil principalities and powers, he does it by putting his multicolored, multi-ethnic church on display. When God wants to give the devil an ulcer, he says, look at my multi-ethnic, all nations, multicolored church. Ta-da! What do you got to say about that, devil? There's nothing you can do about it because the culture of Christ is greater than any culture. There is nothing superior to the love of Jesus Christ. Clap your hands. Lift your voices. Yes! What am I saying to the pastors? And the missionaries, they told us in Singapore, don't be stupid. Don't mix Indians and Chinese in the same congregation. May I tell you my, what I believe? I believe if you want to shut the devil's mouth, anybody here like to shut the devil's mouth? Get yourself a multicolored congregation. Get you some red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. He loves them of your city, your county, your state, this nation, the nations abroad. Come on. Come on, church. Come on. Open your heart. Pray big prayers. Get big-minded about what God is doing in the earth. may be seated the culture of Christ is to worship Jesus sent out the 70 when remember the story we don't know their names they were no name disciples like most of us they were sent to go forth in faith in the power of his name and when they did they demoralized the devil anybody into demoralizing the devil there's a scripture that I love when they asked Jesus, a, de- a stupid devil gave away. The Bible says that the devil's not that smart and that we don't have to be ignorant of his devices. He's not very original. I see the same things that he did in the Old Testament still being played out in foreign countries. The same kind of God situation, same nonsense. It's not that smart. And the devil said to Jesus, Have you come to torment us before our time? You know what happens when the devil asks me that? Yes! I have been given authority to put you underfoot. I can tread on serpents and on scorpions. And if you're wondering if I'm going to give you a bad time, the answer is yes. If I'm going to torment you, yes, 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 yes. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It is my job to give you an ulcer. Sent out the 70. Jesus, in effect, said this. Satan's domain. Jesus said, I watched that. I watched what you boys were doing. And Satan's domain was doomed through the Holy Ghost action. And I literally saw him fall like lightning. I think that's what that scripture's saying. Not a gazillion years ago, when he was thrown out of heaven, though that applies too. But Jesus was talking about just now. When you went forth in my name and prosecuting the persecutor so excited Jesus that the Bible says he rejoiced in spirit. And some of us go, yes, that's nice. He rejoiced. Thank you, Jesus. That is not what that scripture means. You look up the word in your strong concordance. It means he leaped, that he spun in joy 
that he was excited. He's leaving because he said, when they go forth in my name, the domain of Satan falls like lightning. The devil cannot stand against Jesus' name. Tongued, come on, church. Come on, church. Jesus was a worshiper. Don't tell me that praise and worship is not a culture buster. You can have an uppity Fifth Avenue spirit. Praise can take it down. You can have a down and out, woe is me spirit. Culture. Jesus can lift it up. I could give you examples in Thailand, Borneo, where the headhunters used to be. India, where just a few weeks ago, 228, Brother Lawrence Sunger received the Holy Ghost in just one little church. But I, can I tell you one story about Pakistan? Please be seated. Now I'm, I'm getting to, this is what I do, tell stories. Not a, not a storyteller in Tennessee, that, that's bad. A teller of stories. I have to get that culturally correct. I was in Pakistan in Lahore with Brother Alan Shom and Brother Lyndon Shom. And uh, they had been having great revival in the north and in the south. But Lahore is in the central. Not much was happening. Came there to preach. And that Islamic spirit is so oppressive. And we're, I'm up on the platform. There's about 500 people inside of a, a concrete fence enclosure. And uh, I, I didn't feel anything. Uh, I didn't get nothing out of the singing because I didn't understand Urdu. Uh, the minor key that they were singing in was uh, major to me. Uh, it was just a lot of stuff I wasn't getting. But then they invited some Patan, I, I, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but warriors, and they came up with these little pieces of metal that they clacked together. I'm talking about tall, warrior-looking men with beards, and, and they walk up there like this. They looked, but when they started singing, and they started clacking and clacking that, that stuff, the Holy Ghost goes, whoo, whoo, whoo. and I get up on my feet, and God said, now be a good time for you to dance, Willoughby. 500 or so people. Nobody's dancing. Okay, God, you want me to dance? I head to the back of the platform. God said, ah, 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 ah. Right out front. I said, God... I said, they might misunderstand. They, they don't know me. They might think I'm just showing out. God said, you are showing out, aren't you? You're showing out for me, aren't you? I said, nevertheless, I have discerned that real men don't dance in this culture. The last thing I want to do is come across sissy to those guys. So thank you, no thank you very much. And God said, stay with me. I said, dance. Furthermore, I want you to dance around the entire perimeter of the place. Should have danced earlier. So, God says, you do think I'm worthy, don't you? Ooh, I hate it when he asks those kind of questions. What are you supposed to say? Oh, yeah, of course you're worthy. Then get with it. So I came down off of that platform, and I'm dancing. There are 1,000 eyeballs. I dance down this side. 
I dance across the back. Everybody's like this. As I'm going around, and I dance all the way around, nobody is dancing. Am I telling the truth, Brother Sean? And I come back up on the platform, and I came to about right here, and God said this. He said, Steve Willoughby, because you have been obedient to what I have asked you to do, just like in the days of old, my servant Abraham, that I said that wheresoever his feet trod, that I would give to him. God said, now then, everything inside the perimeter of where you danced is under your authority. Mr. Principality and Power and Ruler of a Darkness, I need an audience with you, front and center. Don't know if you just heard God's declaration, but here's what I understand from what he just told me. And this is exactly what I said. And right there, I, I, said, I said, devil, I might not have authority over you in this entire nation. I may not have authority over you in this entire city. But I just received complete and total spiritual domain over this property. So I'm serving you notice, devil. Devil out. Jesus in. Devil out. Jesus in. The culture of Christ is a worshiping exuberant, excited, vibrant church. I know what I have, devil, and you're not welcome on the premises. There was pen, the demon possessed were healed. It had never happened in Lahore, Pakistan. Eighty people got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Don't sound like a big number. But brother, how? I believe that God let this country boy from Finley, Tennessee hit a crack in a spiritual domain. Because brother, how was just there last year in November or in 2002. And they had not 500. They never had a crowd larger than 500. But they had 17,000 with more than 1,000 receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You can break down Satan's barriers with your worship. You can destroy principalities and powers by being a worshiper. It's the culture of, come on, somebody needs to turn loose. Somebody needs to let go. Somebody needs to claim dominion. Right now, in your city, claim dominion and authority. Missionary in your country, pray a big prayer. Believe a big God for big results. Yes! Come on. Come on. We got a moment. Dance on your dilemma. Worship over your problem. Walk on your storm with a dance. Give God glory for a financial infusion. Give God glory. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. This isn't wild. This is extravagant worship for an extravagant God in a 
extravagant hour of need. He's full of power. He's full of resources. He's full of glory. If you're too timid to worship extravagantly, it's because you're too focused on you and not enough focused on him. Yeah, I said it. If you can't lose yourself to worship and glorify him, then you think too highly of yourself. But we can make war with our worship. We can tear down Satan like lightning. Folks, I want you to know we got another family going back. Hallelujah. Steve and Yvonne Nix, they had no idea, but they're going back. Come on, Steve. Vamos. Come on, folks. Some pastor needs to dance. Somebody needs to dance. Jim Stark, where are you? You need to dance around this place tonight because tomorrow night, 1,000 people, Brother Jordan, are going to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The culture of Christ, the culture of Christ, hallelujah, is to pray, it's to win souls, it's to worship. Come on, we got time to dance a moment. We got time to worship extravagantly. You got time to give God glory. Hallelujah. The culture of Christ redeemed me with his saving blood by the power of his name. While you're standing, let me tell you. <laughs> Take that, devil. Come on, brother mathematics. In your face, devil. Ah, yeah. Can I can I give you the ending of this message? God gave me the ending before he gave me any of the other stuff. You see, it's wonder, I, 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 I can't tell you how exciting this has been. The team, Brother DePriest, Brother Pasley, Brother, Brother Mooney, all of y'all, all of them did this. All of that group, all of the executives, everyone. 
this is, it, it just, you just vibrate with it. But I don't believe we've reached our potential yet. You see, the culture of Christ was a given. Jesus was and is a giver. God spoke to us in Singapore and said, if you'll give 25% of your income to Faith Promise for one year, at the end of that year, you'll have more resources than you have projects. Did you hear me? 25% of your gross income above your tithe, above your offerings. Tabernacle of Joy began doing that. 18 families plus. The day, say the day. The, day. the commitment was finished. Through a series of donors, money started pouring in. And so far, about 700,000 Singapore dollars, that's about 500,000 U.S. since the first of the year. I started telling that story, but I had to, I, I quit because it usually ended in some kind of joke, and somebody would invariably say to me, does your donors have brothers? I understand this saying that we all but you see when somebody said that and I could detect that there was really just a touch of want to there I knew they had missed the point you missed the whole point of the story because you want the end without the beginning you want the blessing without the 25%. The question you should be asking is not that your donors have brothers, but how do I get a word from the Lord? Because the secret of getting is you first have to give. And the secret of giving is you first have to have a word. Now everybody just went wild and I love that. There ain't nobody, nobody, nobody. Bring it on. Young, old, bring it on. I'll dance with you to the last dance. But there's more to this than a dance. I've got a word for me. I don't know if it's a word for you, but I was in the home of a friend and I was praying early morning. And Jesus asked me, he said, Steve, do you know how easy it is to raise a $10 million offering? I said, no, God, I, I, I don't. I never thought of it as easy. He said, divide 10 million by $10,000. I went and got a calculator because I'm poor in math. And I wanted to get it right. And I put in 10 and all of those zeros divide 10,000. And the number 1,000 popped up. And when I saw 1,000, my emotions erupted. I burst into sobbing tears. I fell to the ground because I was outdoors. I fell to the ground with that calculator in my hand. And I said, God, is that all? It only takes 1,000 people to give $10,000 and we could be taking up a $10 million offering. Some are saying $10 million. I'll tell you what's in my spirit. That's nothing. That should be nothing. That's within our means. The devil has us confused with somebody who doesn't care. But we are a caring, compassionate, apostolic people who have the world on our heart. So God said, Steve, let me. You go to the conference. 
and you give $5,000. As the pastor of Tabernacle of Joy, I want you to be an example. And then I want you to call your church and I want you to challenge them and see if they'll give $5,000. I did and they did. Here is our check for $10,000. That's what God told me to do. As I was leaving the home of the friend that I was staying in, I told him, I said, I want to thank you for, hear me, the righteous factor that's in your house. I touched heaven today and got direction. And I said, God is talking and saying, we're going to see 10,000, yea, 20 and 30,000. Brother Varnell, that $30,000 that we talked about is going to happen in a service just like this, just like that. It is going to happen. I'm going to tell you I told you so. And I shared my heart with this businessman. I got into my car to put it in reverse. And when I did, he reached inside the car and said, I'd like to buy into that $10 million vision. Here's my check for $10,000. Don't tell me people don't want to give. Don't tell me that God, that the culture of Christ is not a giving body. I want you right now. We've been dancing about the victory. I want this to end in the greatest worship. But somebody here needs to listen to the voice of the Lord. Somebody here is getting their call into missions. Some young person is dedicating not just 5,000, not just 10,000, but they're becoming a living sacrifice. If you have, would you raise your hands? Would you open your hearts? Jesus, right now, I release. This is the seed that you told me to plant. Hallelujah. Brother Andrus just said, he said, I have a fishing vessel. I am going to sell it and give the first $10,000 to this cause of Christ. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, oh, we came by prepared giving. We came with prepared giving. But we, could we come? 10000 POA for the Anthony Mangan right here. I feel to be a part of this. I believe this is of God tonight. It may be out of our thinking capacity, but it is of God. And my wife and I are going on record to add 10,000 to this number. The UPC of Apopka, Mike Williams, $10,000. 10,000 from Maria. 10,000. Osher City, 10,000. Brother Willoughby, this is personal, and I know we'll have to take all of our savings. But my wife and I will give $10,000. The church in Nashville, Tennessee, where my sister goes, $10,000. $10,000. Brother Lehman, $10,000. My wife and I just resigned our church Sunday to go on evangelistic field. God's talked to me all day. Thank you for preaching under the anointing. Our home will sell very soon, and I'll give $10,000. Ah! Come on, church. This is supernatural. This is just like it was in the book of Acts. You said you wanted to be apostolic. Come on, break forth. We got 10,000 from Calvary in Columbus. I've got a truck I've been trying to sell, and I will sell it for 10,000. I will give it to this. Truck for sale. $10,000. Come on, church. Open your heart in Jesus' name. Right now, God, I release the spirit of apostolic giving. Brother Stone King, just personally. Folks, most of us give out of our church. It's time to make this personal. That man just gave $10,000 out of his personal finances. That's what God's doing here. Brother Willoughby. I told my wife, she's back home sick, I'm not going to give anything in foreign missions tonight. Our companies have 34 partners in missions, but I'm giving $10,000 tonight. 
Brother Skaggs, a businessman. A bit, don't tell me there's, there's blessing in the house. We're blessed. We've heard it all weekend long. 10,000. Brother Randy Keys, 10,000. Evangelist Eli Kathy and Charity Hernandez, 10,000. Come on, let's give God glory. 10,000, Steve. $10,000. How about Koshar? Brother John's, 10,000. Brother Randy and Carolyn Adams, 10,000. Brother Gary Carter, $10,000. Brother Jones, $10,000. Brother Robin Ed, $10,000. Brother Jim Kilgore. Brother Parker, $10,000. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. Stanmar Motors in Livingston, Texas, $10,000. Ten evangelists, a thousand each for $10,000. Brother Hale, $10,000. Apostolic Church of Enfield, Cliff Readout, 10000 Hallelujah, to put missionaries back on the field. 10000 from France. Brother Navaki in the church in France. Brother Ams, 10000 Brother Ams. Brother Jordan, 10000 Goodness Field, Pentecostal, Tennessee, 10000 Newport News, 10000 Brother Rango. Rick Trees, 10,000. 10,000, John Hopkins. Jack Cunningham, Chesapeake, Virginia, 10,000. Here's a check from a former retired missionary, $10,000. Come on, church, lift your hands, lift your hearts. This is a sovereign move of the Holy Ghost. Church of Okinawa and Brother Missionary Doan's family, $10,000. Brother Hebert, $10,000. Full Gospel Tabernacle, Eureka, California, $10,000. $10,000 from Brother Davis. Pastor and Sister Kyle, $10,000. Home Missions, $10,000. Brother Foster, $10,000. Saints of God. Brother Shoemate, ten thousand dollars. I would love to give the money, but I don't have it. So instead, I'm going to give myself to go wherever. It's time to make an aisle here for those that say, "I don't have ten thousand dollars. I'll give myself." Ten missionaries, a thousand each. First Church, Toronto, Canada, ten thousand dollars. Come in. Ten thousand. Ten thousand from Hawaii. New, new believer. New believer. Ten thousand in Hawaii. Home missionary Leon Sugger, New Braunfels, Texas, ten thousand dollars. Haya Kandara Moksha Ten thousand from face. I had a story to tell about Sandra Subner and Elijah, but it just wasn't to be tonight, Brother Kinsey. I wanted to tell him how that for seventeen years a, a brother was lost, but prayer that God found him. He received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and was baptized in Jesus' name in your church. He just personally, him and his wife, gave ten thousand personally and another ten thousand from their church. Reverend Stephen Becky Wilford, ten thousand personal. Murphy's Furrow, Tennessee, 10,000. Calvary, Brother Mooney, 10,000. Louisiana District, UPC, 10,000. Brother Kevin Cox. This brother, Pastor Morrison, Indiana, Washington, Indiana, is selling his house. And from the proceeds of his house, he's going to give $10,000. Once again, would you just let's just take a moment and lift our hands and praise him. The Holy Ghost is moving. This road warrior 
Brother and Sister Tinny are personally giving $10,000. Here's a check. Hallelujah. From Brother and Sister Frankens, $10,000 from Texas. Bruce Fontel, Christian Life Church, $5,000, British Columbia. Brother Young from Bethel Springs, personally $10,000. The church, $10,000. Brother Mark Hadabal, $10,000. Church property that is for sale, and from that, $10,000 is given here tonight. Brother Schlegel is a missionary to Turkey. He's going to sell his motor home. Sometimes as a missionary, you just hope you can break even. And many times that's not even possible. But he is committing from the sale of his motor home $10,000. Thank you for doing what the Lord asked you to do. Doug and Vicki Davis, $10,000. Arkansas District, UPC, $10,000. B.J. Thomas, personal, Fort Smith, Arkansas, 10,000. Missionary David Klein, 5,000. Missionary Brother Klein, 5,000. $1,000 cash offering right now from Netta Brewer. Jerry Richardson, $10,000. Three missionaries going together, $10,000. Boston UPC, 5,000. Anonymous, 10,000. Evangelist Chris Erickson, 10,000. Brother Wagner. He was going to put new windows and doors in his home, but he decided to invest 10 more thousand in the kingdom of God. That's apostolic lifestyle giving. Amen. Terry Black, personal, $10,000. Brother Rudy Tyson, $10,000. And Barry and Associates, $10,000. You still have this left. Brother Jeff Arno, $10,000. Try to outgive Brother Arno. New Britain, UPC, $10,000. Calvary Church and the Pasleys, $10,000 thousand each. This isn't your first time, Brother Norman. God's got a miracle. This is personal from Brother Shadwell. The check is already written out. Ten thousand. On his way up here, Brother Mark Harris asking to bring ten thousand. Brother Darrell Dowdy, ten thousand. My wife and I have a timeshare. We're not going to vacation in luxury while the world is lost. I'm going to sell it in that $10,000. That's apostolic. That's apostolic. A timeshare. Not going to vacation in luxury. Nothing wrong with vacation. How about Brother Sully ex was missionary in Africa. They just uh, had their faith promise service. It went up $10,000. They're giving that tonight to mission. While this is continuing, I'm asking for some prayer warriors. I'm asking some men and women of God with anointing. Hallelujah. In your life, there's young men up here that are bowing down to the calls and the answering. Hallelujah. The anointing and the calling of God. I want us to crowd in here. I want us to come in here and spend some time in prayer. Hallelujah. Mike Kahn, personally, 10000 Nathan Roberts, 10000 Corner, Cornerstone UPC, 10000 First UPC Center, Texas, 10000 The Calvary Church, 10000 Joe Ellis, 10000 Roger and Willow Yaden, White Horse Yukon, 10000 Roy Moss, 10000 D.D. Davis, New York, personal, 10,000. Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, 10,000. Tim Williamson, missionary to Washington, D.C., 10,000. Mark Hugby. Mark uh, Hub, Hub, 
10,000 from Newport Ritchie, Florida. Wayne Trout, 5,000. Texas District, 10,000. 5,000, Adam. Amers, Hunley. Brother Simeon Youngs, he and his wife are cashing. Hallelujah insurance policies, 10,000. Jason Cisco, Trial Ministries, 10,000. Terry Riddick, 1,000, missionary. Tony Lewis, give me 10,000 when I sell my house. Tony Lewis, 10,000 when he sells his house. Brother Dibble, missionary to the Philippines, 5,000. Hallelujah. Brother Mark Gass, 5,000. Scott Gwynn, the proceeds of the sale of my truck. Scott Gwynn, the proceeds of the sale of his truck. Christian Family Worship, Manchester, New Hampshire, 15,000. Tremaine Seminole, Zimbabwe, 10,000. The Lee Church, Canton, Ohio, 10,000. Pastor Eller. We're well over $1 million already, folks. That's besides the $500,000 we raised in the beginning. There are people that are coming to the altar right now praying. Hallelujah, please come. Missionaries, come and pray. There are forms to fill out for those that are praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, please. Urban Baxter, Brother Baxter, thank you. $10,000. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. W.G. Stamper from Russellville, Kentucky, UPC. A check for $10,000. Azusa Street Riders, $10,000. Brother Lincoln Graham, won this Pentecostal Tabernacle, $10,000. Brother Kevin Arthur, hallelujah. Kevin, thank you so much, $10,000. Ed Snyder just called. He's not here with us. Called from Virginia. He's given $10,000. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's people that would love to give 10000 that cannot, but they're coming to this altar right now. They're giving their lives to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jonathan Stevens from Elkin, Maryland, $5,000. When Clifford and Karen Barnett sell their house, Washington District Superintendent, $10,000. Brother Alan Demas, missionary. Brother Demas, thank you, $10,000. Kevin Fergie, money saved for retirement. This is better than a mutual fund, $10,000. Brother Manuel Rogers for a crusade in Africa, 10,000. Apostolic Temple, Pasadena, Tennessee, uh, uh, Pasadena, Texas. Brother McLean, thank you, $10,000. Brother Russo and Kevin Prince, 5,000 each for $10,000. Thank you, brethren. Richard and Coral Denny, $1,000 in 90 days. Kevin and Diana Cobb, personal, when they sell their house, $10,000. Reverend and Mrs. Alvin Turner, personal, $10,000. We will send it in. We are elderly and, sa and sa saving this up. God bless you. Charles and Norma Clapp, $10,000 for Oklahoma. Brother Van Sant, when he sells his house, when the house sells, $10,000. Stephen Summers, Amor to Malta, when they sell their house, $10,000. Daniel and Jane Buford, thank you, Brother Buford, $10,000. Hallelujah, classic term in transportation. Kevin Ryan, uh, Tucson, Arizona, $10,000. A check from Richard and Donna King, $10,000.
$10,000. Spencer McFerrin from uh, Camargo, Illinois, $64. $10,000 from Ellen Tonat. Hallelujah. For Pacific, Port Moresby, $10,000. Kirsten Showalter, a missionary kid. Hallelujah, $10,000. God, I love you, Jesus. Bob Banners, New York, $10,000. Hallelujah, brother and sister Fitch, missionaries, uh, 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 former missionaries, $1,000. Russell Baker, $2,000, St. Albert, Alta, Canada. Now it's time to start dancing. Now it's time to start worshiping. Now it's time to take authority over sickness and disease. If you know somebody that's sick in the house, the Holy Ghost is here right now. Somebody needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost right now. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Pastor in Louisville, Texas, uh, Kentucky. God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, touch every heart, oh God. In the name of the Lord right now, touch God. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah, touch every individual here that you're calling, oh God, in the name of Jesus.